So trigger finger is a very common diagnosis that oftentimes patients will come in with pain over a single finger. And with that finger, they might feel clicking or catching. It's most predominantly going to occur first thing in the morning, where they might notice the finger is actually caught down in a flexed position. Sometimes they can get it back out on their own. Other times they need to use their other hand to actually get the finger back out into a straight position. Trigger fingers classically happen more commonly in people with thyroid disease or people that have a history of diabetes. With that being said, anybody can end up with a trigger finger. Um, that you don't have to have had a previous injury and you don't need to have had a family history of it or other, anything, other injuries or things wrong with your fingers to get a trigger finger. To diagnose a trigger finger is something that we do clinically. I talk to you through your history, get a story of what's happening and what's going on with your hand and your fingers, how long it's been going on, and then we do a physical examination. And based on that physical exam, as well as your history, then we put together a picture and decide if this, this is something that you have as a trigger finger or if there's something else that is going on and causing you problems. Classically, trigger fingers do not go away if you ignore them. The first line of treatment for a trigger finger is an injection. We in inject a steroid along the flexor tendon of that finger, um, and that helps decrease the amount of inflammation and irritation around there and helps the finger slide back and forth better so it doesn't pop and click on you as, as much and doesn't cause as much pain. Injections are effective about 40% of the time. So four out of 10 patients, when you get an injection, the trigger finger goes away and it never comes back again. That number is a little bit lower for diabetic patients. And that number is all, also only good for patients on their first injection. On their second injection, the ratio goes down a little bit more, closer to around to the mid 20%. That's still better than going to surgery. So we generally try two injections before we talk about any type of surgical intervention. For surgery, it's an outpatient surgery. In general, we put an IV into one side and give you a little bit of sedation. As I tell my patients, it's a couple margaritas before they give you the chips and salsa, so you feel nice and relaxed. And then on that side that's bothering you on that finger, when you come back to the operating room after you've had a little bit of sedation, I put some numbing medicine in there. And then the incision is roughly about one and a half to two centimeters long, and it's just over your finger. If my middle finger was the one bothering me, it's just a little incision right along here actually release the tunnel that the tendon's traveling through and, and catching on and it opens up the area and allows the tendon to travel without catching and clicking anymore. After surgery you'll be in a wrap or a bandage. You leave that bandage on for about seven to ten days until you come back and see me in the clinic. We'll take your stitches out. Nothing more than five pounds to that hand for around four weeks after surgery. That means pushing, pulling, gripping, or grasping anything with that hand. But immediately after surgery I'm going to have you start using that hand. So the day of surgery, I want you doing exercises and moving that finger to make sure it doesn't get stiff. It's okay to start doing light things such as typing. Now I want you to use that hand to help you start eating, brushing your teeth, things like that, and make sure that your fingers don't get stiff.